assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome to my channel scarlio knowledge uh, in our previous lecture we have discussed the equilibrium how the equilibrium is being derived what is the demand and the supply curve and how we plot the equilibrium on the basis of the supply curve and the demand curve today uh, we would discuss if this equilibrium gets out of balance or if there is an in uh, in imbalance of the equilibrium it is called uh, in a general language it is called disequilibrium basically disequilibrium is a situation where uh, the internal forces or the external forces prevent market equilibrium uh, to uh, from being reached or uh, it it could also uh, cause the market to fall out of uh, the equilibrium now this uh, now these uh, forces could be many we would discuss it uh, later now this disequilibrium could be a, a consequence a short term consequence of a change in any of the uh, factors or the variables that we have discussed earlier or it could be a long term uh, structural imbalances also now what the general reasons could there be behind these kind of disequilibriums it could be any uh, government obligations or any uh, regulatory uh, body obligations which we need to follow which the market uh, need to follow uh, it could be uh, inefficiencies or the in the allocation of the resources it could be inefficiencies in the labor market also it could be the monopolistic uh, decisions that are being taken by the suppliers or the distributors or um, the market players who are the um, main uh, role players in the market or, or who occupy the maximum share of the market so they could also exercise their uh, monopolies at, the, at that time as well so now these kind of disequilibriums are generally uh, being resolved by entering into some kind of uh, new equilibrium or uh, it's sometimes really hard to get uh, to stay at the same equilibrium but yes after some time after those uh, um, forces that are present in the market a uh, market would end up in some kind of a new equilibrium and uh, the things would uh, keep uh, on going on the new equilibrium perspective there could be one reason uh, that uh, supplier if a supplier sets any fixed price or uh, if there is any sticky price which means that they would uh, resist the uh, ongoing prices of the market and they would stick for some time on their decided prices so this kind of uh, situation always create some kind of a surplus in the market um we would discuss it later so what that what is surplus what is shortage and how it is being um, you know um, uh, how we come across Uh, the surpluses or the shortages in the market but for now just for the sake of understanding i mean uh, i i want to make a a, a bottom line uh, for you guys that um, when we talk that the mono that suppliers have a monopolistic approach and they want to um, uh, gain more profit so they um, so they monopolize the market and they manipulate the market and what they do is they they go with that fixed kind of prices uh, regardless of the of the prices going on in the in the other markets of that particular commodity or a service it could also be the government interventions like uh, as i earlier said that it could be any kind of uh, of uh, obligations by the regulatory bodies like the price ceilings or price floor price ceiling uh, basically comes in uh, when price ceiling comes into practice there would be a shortage in the market and when there would be a price floor there would be a surplus of the product in the market so when the government uh, uh, 
sticks the market for the price ceiling or for the price floor, uh, there would be there would always be a disequilibrium uh, in the market because if it is good um, for one party or for uh, or for one side of the market, like if it is good for the from the consumer's perspective, so obviously it would the the supplier would have to pay the price of that uh, price floor or the price ceiling. So either it is good for one uh, uh, party or it is good for the other. For it, let's suppose that uh, the uh, price, the equilibrium price now uh, for the rise, the equilibrium, equilibrium price is not um, existing in the market and now the actual price that exists in the market Let's suppose it is P1. At this price, now the demand has increased from 300 to 400 of units. But as you can see, at price P1, the supply has decreased from 300 to 200 uh, kgs of the rice. Now the graph is self-explanatory and it is the beauty of this graph that the graph explains it itself that now there is this much of the discrepancy just because of this much of the price change which means that if we have decreased two units of the prices or two dollar of the price the impact on the market is that that the uh, that the uh, the the demand side or the, or the consumer side now wants 100 kgs or 100 units more than the equilibrium quantity and the uh, supplier side now wants uh, now want to supply 100 units less of what they were providing or supplying to the market earlier which means now the quantity demanded is greater than quantity supplied which again means that now the quantity demanded is 400 kg and the quantity supplied is 200 kg which has created shortage of 200 units or 200 kgs now this point and this point mentions the shortage which means that now the demand side is expecting 400 units but the supply side is willing to supply only 200 units now this shortage is being created in the market now consumers want to buy at four dollar but suppliers do not want to supply much of the quantity at this price and due to the discrepancy between the demand and the supply there is a shortage of the commodity in the market right now now here suppliers will provide a smaller amount of rice as the price may be too low to cover the marginal cost of production. Now this shortage occurs due to the inefficient uh, allocation of the resources. If it is a free market, the price would increase to the equilibrium price as the scarcity of the good forces the price to rise like if there would be a shortage there would be some uh, buyers in the market who would be willing to buy the product at some higher price like they would be willing to buy the mark uh, the buy to buy the price um, not exactly on four dollars now they would they are willing to buy the rice let's suppose on 4.5 or five dollars so the suppliers would somehow agree to supply at 4.5 or 5 dollars uh, per kg their commodity 
and uh, eventually in the market they would agree to come back to the same equilibrium now it is the simple situation uh, at this point in time we are not uh, um, considering the factors or the kind of uh, things that affect the production side now as you can see that there is a shortage of the goat as the amount of the goat between QD and QS this is my QD and this is my QS so as the amount of the goat between the QD and the QS is now different at lower than the equilibrium uh, price consumer demand more of the goods and producers are willing to supply at that price because there is an imbalance between the quantity demanded and quantity supplied at this price the situation is not stable now some individuals are willing to pay more than price p1 so they will start uh, start to bid the price up and uh, a higher price will cause producers to supply a large quantity now this adjustment process will continue until the equilibrium price has been reached and quantity demanded is equal to the quantity supplied in the start of my lecture i've said i've talked about the price ceilings and the price floor so let's suppose that this price in the start uh, the the price was six dollars and uh, the market was agreed to uh, sell and purchase the price at uh, at six dollars of the 300 kgs of the rice now let's suppose if uh, most of the consumers are unable to afford at this price now government comes into action and they want and they have reduced the prices of the rice now at to uh, four dollars per kg now now this decided price is basically the lower to the equilibrium price and they have made this cap this is the price ceiling that they want that they are not allowing any of the uh, supplier to supply their product above this price so the price this is price ceiling so price ceiling would always be lower than the equilibrium in order to be effective in many of the books and uh, on the internet also you would find a very common example of the price ceiling uh, which is the government control on the uh, on the on the rents so this rent control is the classic example of the price ceiling uh, which means that if a government sets a price ceiling on the rent the landlords may be reluctant to rent out their entire property to tenants and there will be excess demand for housing due to the shortage of the rental property now the reason for giving uh, uh, this example in the mid of all this stuff is that again when we talk about the price ceiling which is again the one of the factor that is shifting the uh, the price and the quantity demanded and supplied from the equilibrium to a new point is creating now a shortage in the market which means that the landlords who were willing to uh, uh, rent out their houses at the equilibrium price price are now not willing to uh, rent out their houses and there would be a shortage of the houses in the market so this example is just uh, being discussed for the sake of understanding now let's just come back to our main topic here we have seen the shortage and this is how we are going to uh, see the amount of shortage we are facing in the market right now
now how this equilibrium would move to a new equilibrium or a, uh, how if uh, there is some kind of a movement uh, from this equilibrium we would discuss it later but for now we just had to make a concept of what the shortage is all about and shortage is being um, created in the market due to the price lower than the equilibrium price there would always be a shortage because there is less incentive for the suppliers and there is more uh, sorry there is less intense incentive for the suppliers right now at this point in time and there there is more incentive for the um, uh, for the buyers so a uh, price equilibrium is always created uh, is always been attained when there is the mutual incentives for both the suppliers and the buyers as well so that's all for now uh, for the above than the if there is above than the equilibrium price we'll discuss it in our next video um, i hope uh, you have made a little bit of the understanding uh, regarding the uh, the shortage or lower than the equilibrium price and we'll uh, see you in the next uh, video uh, which would be again about the um, higher than the equilibrium prices so stay tuned with us uh, and uh, um, if you haven't subscribed uh, my channel please do subscribe to my channel and do support me uh, your support is highly needed at this point of time and uh, please press the bell icon also so that if uh, there is another any other any further videos if i upload any further videos you get the uh, notifications of those videos as well thank you so much